in 1946, my grandfather was credited as being the first man to ever wear a seatbelt at the Indy 500. Back then, they thought it was safe to get thrown from a car. They didn't want you to be in the car in an accident. Unbelievable. You think about the timing of this, this movie and, and Clark Gable and Barbara Stanwyck, two of the biggest stars. It was an interesting characterization, though, of the stunt show as part of it. So here you have Clark Gable as a race car driver and he's actually characterized as a dirty race car driver and he spins out people to win races so they kick him out of racing. So in the meantime, he becomes a lowly stuntman in the Joey Chitwood Thrill Show and has to pay his penance before he's allowed to get back in the big cars and race. But what's more interesting with that movie is you can look back and realize that's probably the first time you had a stunt double from an automotive standpoint because my grandfather was Clark's stunt double in the movie with all of our stuntmen performing the show. But you look back to how we have stunt doubles today and, and car chase scenes and things like that, that was really the start of that true stunt double in movies as it relates to performing stunts, not the fight scenes per se, but actual driving cars and putting them on two wheels, truly unique. And, and I always ask uh, people, a lot of people don't realize that movie is as much about the stunt show is it about, is about race car driving because really half the movie is Clark Gable as a stuntman trying to earn his way back up to big cars. So the finale of our show uh, was the space rocket jump or a ramp to ramp jump and so we would jump that automobile ramp to ramp uh, and uh, it, pr it proved very successful. Really what it was was a big cylinder mounted on the back of a semi and so you would jackknife the semi and we would actually drive a car through it. And so we'd do a 65 foot jump and so it was the space rocket. So as you drove through, we would fire off the pyrotechnics. You would hear the, the boom and the fire and the sparks. So it looked like you were being shot out of a cannon in a car as you landed onto the ramp. True 42, that was the speed. 42 is what you needed to drive to hit the landing mark on the ramp. If you were slow, you were gonna land in the ramp. If you were long, you could hurt yourself just as much. And in fact, that's how my, my father compressed one of his vertebrae and broke his back. When you went in the cannon, it was on an incline. So you actually had to make sure you were at 42 on the upslope as you're going through the cannon. It's not 42 when you were flat. You, you couldn't do a thrill show without an announcer and a clown. The clown, more than anything, was to provide continuity. It took time to set up stunts, to move ramps, to, to move different things, so the clown would go out there and really fill time. It was about providing a real nice smooth show, stunt to stunt to stunt, and having the clown help out so that fans wouldn't realize the setup time it took to be ready for the next, the next stunt. You know, driving a car 35, 45 miles per hour on two wheels isn't as special as some of the special effects you see in movies nowadays. I can remember learning how to drive a car on two wheels. I remember the feeling when I learned what the balancing point was and what it was like to be able to make the turn. Would I love uh, for this generation to understand what it meant? Absolutely. I'm a realist though and know that it's tough to compare uh, generational entertainment.